It's on Pixelog's channel. They'll talk about it here too. So we've got this thing here, cylinder for example. And I'm going to go ahead and make a polymesh 3D. And if we just really quickly want to like divide this thing up or smooth it nicely, you can just go into the geometry crease menu and drop your crease tolerance down, turn that on, turn on dynamic, get a nice crease on here, and then just apply those dynamic properties. So all this is happening under geometry, um, the, the edge loop. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm losing my place here. Uh, under the crease menu is where your crease tolerance is, and then your dynamic subdivision levels, if you do D and Shift D, that turns dynamic on and off. So I basically applied those subdivision levels here. And now I can go ahead and uh, turn this into, I'm going to turn off project, turn off blur, and just dynamesh this thing. So we're going to like use Zeria Mesh, or let's say we're just doing some concept sculpting. I'm going to do Alt E, uh, just go to my custom, and you can do a BI brush insert, and we can do a sphere. Actually, let's do a, I want to talk about this. We're going to do another cylinder here, and just drop that on. Oops. We'll do one like this. There we go. And we'll stick it in there a little bit. And then uh, if I do want to sharpen this one up, I can quickly just do a split mass points. And then again, do a crease tolerance, which it'll inherit from the previous uh, object we inserted that on. Uh, then we can turn on dynamic, hit apply. Then we can merge these two subtools down and just dynamesh those together. So we have a dynamesh mesh. Now, if this thing was polygrouped, we would have a pretty decent Z remesh start, but they're not. So one thing you can try, let's go over here to polygroups and just try grouping by normals. Uh, in this case, it happened to work pretty good. You can keep dropping that max angle down and see if it picks up any more. So that actually did a really good job. If for some reason it doesn't, you can manually go in and just start masking like where you want your stuff to go. Now you're gonna see as I go to the edge here, that mask kind of bleeds over. Um, we may have talked about this before, I forget. But if I hold down control, you're gonna see I have a mask concave and a mask convex. Now if you open up the brush menu here, and we go to depth. Here you're gonna see there's a, uh, a depth curve. Uh, if I hold down control uh, under mask pin, there is no depth mask. So if you turn on depth mask, you can that allows you to kind of grab these ones here, and that's kind of like an, a cool auto mask. So if I go over here to mask concave, that's taking the top one down almost to zero. If I go here to mask convex, that's taking the bottom one down and going up almost to zero. And I say almost to zero because it doesn't quite go to zero, it just, make it a very small number, but not exactly zero. Like this one is uh, like 0 0.05 is fine. Uh, and this is all from Joseph Drust. I watched one of his helmet videos and it was in there. Um, so what that does is, for example, this mask convex allows you to just, you can make a really big brush and then just start masking. And when you hit an edge, it'll go ahead and stop for you. And now mask concave, so it'll, it won't do that down here, however, mass concave will you know you'll hit that edge there and it'll stop so you can just really quickly go through here and use mass concave looks like i overshot it there uh, mass concave against those ones switch over to mass convex and then just finish that up so you can just really quickly grab surfaces now you can also aim this way so if you go to polygroup here, hit control W. Uh, if you're lucky and everything's lined up like this you can also just make your camera go like this and do group uh, visible, no, group front, and that'll just go through, and uh, it doesn't do that, it kind of missed it a little bit, so I'm going to change this angle down a little bit, there we go, and then it'll just group whatever's front, so you can do group front here, and that's another option. Now the whole point, so any of those uh, techniques will work, and the whole point of doing that is just so you can get, um, you can turn keep groups on when you do a hard edge zero mesh. Now, uh, what that's essentially doing is the same thing as if you were to go over here to stroke, uh, curve, do like curve polygroups. You can frame your mesh with a curve. Uh, and that's basically if you were, you know, let's undo that. If you go B, uh, Z, Z remesher guides, you know how you can put in a curve and Z remesher will follow that curve. Um, well, if any curves on your object when you Z remesh is going to treat it as a Z remesher guide. So that's just a really easy way to get nice um, curve guides. So you can actually, you know, increase that curve strength up if you have curves, or if you keep keep uh, curve keep groups on, it'll go ahead and treat those the edges of your poly groups as if they were um, curve guides. 
So anyway, I'm going to go grab my groups, my normals back. So we have our groups here. I can go ahead and say keep groups. Now, if you have smooth groups turned on, it's going to want to smooth those transitions a little bit. You can turn that down to zero if it helps. We'll keep it up at one in this particular case just to see how it does. Uh, target polling on count, I'm at 81,000 now. We'll keep it at five. Adaptive size, I'm going to turn down to zero and just hit zero mesh. And now... I should go ahead and zero mesh this for her for us, and I have we have keep groups on, so it'll keep nice uh, borders around all of those. And of course, you can just keep hitting half with keep groups on, and it'll just keep uh, splitting down. Now it keeps. Uh, oh, so this is where smooth groups comes into play. Uh, it's it's kind of getting warped as it goes down. So I'm going to take smooth groups and go down to zero. And now it'll keep those nice and sharp for me. And you just go down as low as you want. Um, you can also go over here to edge loop and hit delete loops. And that'll delete any extraneous loops. And then if you want nicer caps on here, just go ahead and control shift, isolate them. Invert that and then do a delete hidden. And then go into your Z modeler brush, BZM. And we'll just do a close convex hole. We'll just go ahead and close those holes off here. And we'll isolate those, do a quick auto groups, poly groups, auto groups. And now we've got all of these retopologized. And now you can go in here and if it's just retopology, you're done. Uh, you can also go in here and like start adding bevels and stuff for that kind of thing. So now I chose these examples specifically because it works. Um, there's going to run into some instances on really complex objects where it has a really hard time zero meshing. In that case, you might be stuck just kind of manually retopologizing that stuff. Uh, oh, looks like Nightbot's out on the on the prowl. <laughs> uh, what is it even chilling? I, I don't know. I don't control Nightbot. Nightbot controls me. I need to have Aaron. Aaron's the specialist at this streaming stuff. I need to be better at it. That's a bad excuse. I am terrible at this stuff, but eventually I'll learn this stuff. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, we made uh, the greatest, what was the greatest thing ever made? It was that, that skull with the bullets around its head, and, and we put a mustache on it. it was, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and I thought my position was kind of unofficial, too. I, I was a senior artist, and I was like, well, you know what? I do a lot of this stuff, and then I was like, well, you should, you can you train some people, or you can you do documentation, so I started doing that, and then uh, it just kind of led to, uh, here's another thing we can talk about. So if we go to bevel edge loop complete, it kind of led to just a principal artist thing. So if we go to, uh, we can bevel this out, and now we can go to insert multiple edge loops, and interactive elevation. And this is where you can kind of do that bend outwards beveling, and then of course your resolution like this. And you can also go inwards and kind of do kind of that chamfer kind of look. So just in case you were looking for that, same thing on here, you could actually just bevel these things out. Just turn on interactive, and you can kind of pull those things out. Or if you're looking for in, pull it in. Always forget that's a thing. Uh, okay, so Nozumi has a question. In ZModeler, is there a way to snap extrusion to another extruded face? I know you can just click to repeat the same size extrusion, but can I... Sorry, text keeps moving. <laughs> uh, you can click to repeat the same size extrusion, but can I snap while extruding to any other previously created faces? Let me think. So is there a way to snap extrusion to another extruded face? So, okay, for example, if you have, let's do Q mesh polygroup island, and I'm going to take this, hold down control, and I'm just going to make a new polygroup face. And you know what? Let's move it up just a little bit. There we go. So if I want to say, and you know what else we can do? We can go over here to render properties and turn off shadows. Sometimes I feel that makes ZBrush crashy, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to take this one here. So if you have this one, I'm going to Q mesh a single poly. And if we Q mesh, Q mesh will snap it. But yeah, can you, can you say, I don't want to snap it. I don't want it because yeah, Q mesh is going to delete the phases in between those. So then now they're just one object. Um, you know, to avoid that, you could do extrude a single poly, but extrude won't have any 
indication of like, oh, there's a mesh there. And so you'd have to eyeball it. And then, yeah, you could go around and just do the same when you just click on it. But that's a good one. Let me think. Can you tell ZBrush, hey, as I move this out, I want to stop. I, off the top of my head, I don't think so. What I would probably do in that situation, and anybody out there who's watching, correct me if I'm wrong, or if there's a better way, but I would like say these are the faces I want. I'm going to go ahead and pull these up, and then I'm just going to mask those, invert that, and then just move them all up into place. Um, and you, can, you can't really snap, though. Uh, one thing you can do, though, is you can anchor your, you know, your, your, this will snap. The, well, the transpose line will snap. So you can snap on this vert and just pull up, hold down shift and pull up. And then if you hold down shift and move, you can, you're basically doing a non-uniform scale of those vertices. So you can technically snap, quote unquote, those faces to that one vertice using that. You could clip, but then clip isn't going to snap to that face. It's going to snap it up to your clip, but there's no clipping. Hmm, that's a head scratcher. I'd have to think about that one. Of course, my brain's not firing on all cylinders, so uh, not that it ever is really now that I think about it. But yeah, mustache and mohawk. That's right. We used the uh, fiber mesh with the morph target stuff. Yeah, uh, Malkior, that was, that was the first thing I did was like, yeah, Q-Mesh will snap, but then it's going to it's gonna really want to stick those together. So you either have to close holes, which on, in this case wouldn't be a big deal because it's just triangles. But yeah, that's a good one. And even in Maya, I would extrude a face and then I would use just like vert snapping with W and picking an, uh, an axis to kind of snap there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have a weird workaround. It won't be elegant. It won't be pretty, but it, it'll work, kind of. Um, 3D says, can you delete the face as a control drag? So, that's a good one. Because if you have these and you're Q extruding, then you control drag. Yeah, so that's how I made this thing. And then, but yeah, if you wanted to snap them to a particular location... Q-Mesh will do it, but then you'll have to close holes again. Yeah, again, I think my best bet would be like, well, just put it up there. Man, it really wants a snap. And then mask, anchor that vertice, and then just use move, non-uniform scale move to just kind of quickly. Okay, they're snapped technically, but these are still a separate object here. I can go ahead and split this, and now this is sitting directly on that vertice there. 